Hey everyone, in this video I'm showing you how to spawn to bulk, which is an important step in the mushroom cultivation process. So what does spawning to bulk mean? Basically we're taking our colonized grain, our grain spawn, and we're spawning it to a bulk substrate, which in this case is pasteurized cocoa coir. I have another video on how to pasteurize your cocoa coir using a bucket tech method. Be sure to watch that first. If you don't pasteurize or sterilize your cocoa coir, your substrate first, you will get contamination. You will not grow mushrooms, you will grow mold. So be sure to watch that video and be sure to pasteurize your cocoa coir. Next, we're gonna be taking our grain spawn, which this was created using a Capri Sun liquid culture. Be sure to check out those videos. I'll put a link uh, in the description on how to make a liquid culture with the Capri Sun. But it colonized really rapidly. Four weeks, five weeks later, something like that, she is ready to go. Look, there's a mushroom pinning in there. I've never had that happen before. But this is an aggressive uh, medicinal mushroom variety. Um, grows very rapidly, so I'm excited to do this. Um, I've already pasteurized my coir. Like I said, I'm doing a... Oh, actually, I have another jar. I'm doing a one-to-one -one ratio, but I'm using two jars of spawn, two jars of coir. I've put a little bit of extra on the top just in case I do a little casing layer, but I'm going to mix my coir into my final tub. Remember, this is pasteurized coir already. And then we're going to mix in our grain. What's going to happen, we're going to colonize this for two weeks after it's all mixed together. It's going to join together into one big substrate cake, and then mushrooms will grow off of that. So first thing we need to do is uh, break apart our grain. I was told not to do this on your knee in case the jar breaks, so thank you for that. Usually a, a good shake will do. Now in this other jar, I've had, the first thing I, I like to do when I open a jar is just smell it. Oh yeah, it smells like mycelium. I love it. Oh, it's such a good smell. Um, oh, and you know what I didn't do? I didn't take out a little extra coir to keep for a casing layer, which I'll do real quick. Usually once we're all done mixing this together, we'll put a little bit of coir over the top to cover all the corn. Uh, just a little bit. You don't need a lot. All right. This seems to have not colonized it was a little too dry on top so before i mix it up i do want to get out some of these dried kernels this happened to me in another video as well and it worked just fine um, some people said hey just keep those in there they're fine there's some mycelium on them already maybe that's the case but i'm not going to chance it because i don't want to risk contamination in my bin so they could rot so what i did before and what i'll do again is i'll put these in a separate jar with some more coir and I'll do a little experiment grow and let mushrooms grow out of my jar. It's a lot of fun. So there are a lot of fun things to do in mycology besides just growing mushrooms the traditional way. You can have fun with how you grow them. All right, so I'm going to mix this up now. This is the one that's got that cute little pin in it. Say goodbye to that guy. Or we'll say hello to him in a minute, more likely. Forgive my dog, he heard the rattling. Where'd that little pin go? There he is. We've got our first mushroom already. Whoa, and he's got a mycelium net connected to him. Look at you, there you go. I'm gonna just mix him right in there. Well, you know what, maybe he'll rot too. I better take him out. You ever mix pins in if you have pinning in your jar? I don't know. All right, let me know. Leave a comment for me. What would you do? Would you leave it in? Would you take it out? Would you eat it right now? All right, next thing we got to do is mix this up really well. In another video, as I was doing this, I figured out a method that worked pretty well for mixing. If you have it, get another bin. You can just kind of pour them back and forth. I find that a little easier than hand mixing. But there are a hundred ways to do this. What's your favorite way to mix your grain spawn and your pasteurized substrate? So I'll do this a few times. Both of these I've cleaned out with isopropyl alcohol. 
Don't worry, they're clean. All right. I need this still. Don't get rid of it. Make sure this is all combined neatly, mixed thoroughly. You don't want there to be any clumps or like spots without grain. You want the grain to be mixed up, every kernel, every kernel separated, because that'll be more contact points for the, for the mycelium to touch and for the quar to touch and for the mycelium to grow, I should say. So make sure that you mix it really, really well. And then we want to try to get the top as flat as possible. That's going to allow for better moisture conditions on the top, which will allow for more mushrooms to grow. If it's real bumpy, it's going to be harder for moisture to maintain on the top. And it's just harder for mushrooms to grow. So you see, I'm kind of tucking in the sides, making sure there's nothing really sticking up. You can do it this way. Another method somebody put me onto, which is a little quicker, take another tub of the equal size and just press down with that. And you need to press pretty good. You want it, you know, it, you're making a substrate cake. So think of it that way. I'm pressing down pretty good. I mean, you're not, you're not gonna hurt it, but you don't want to obliterate it either. There you have it. That's a pretty good, even playing field for our mushrooms to grow on. Now, really important, what do we do next? Put a lid on it. And this is really easy, actually. Put a lid on it. Label it with a date so you know when you, when you did the spawn to bulk. And then leave it alone. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. I'll say it again. Don't touch it for two weeks, for 14 days, maybe 10 days if you're lucky. But what, what, what's going to happen? We're going to see the mycelium overtake this entire cake. It'll all turn white. Moisture will build on the top and there'll be little droplets all over it. You want the whole thing to be white and covered before we open it. The next step will be opening this after 14 days, introducing oxygen, and then beginning to introduce some extra moisture. Those are fruiting conditions. I'll make a video on that when we get there, but we still have two weeks of colonization left before we get to fruiting conditions. So we got a little time before we have our mushrooms, but it's really important. Don't open this up. You'll initiate fruiting conditions too soon. You could introduce contamination. So keep it closed for 10 to 14 days. I know I've been harping on 14 days, but I'll give you some leeway and say 10 if the top surface is fully covered in mycelium. All right. So we'll be checking in on this. I'll show you the progress along the way. I'll be honest with you along the way if I get contamination because it happens to everybody, including me. I will tell you, we'll deal with it together. It'll happen to you too at some point, but we'll deal with it together. But hopefully in a few weeks, we'll have mushrooms growing off of this. So follow along. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. We did a spawn to bulk. And remember all we did was take our colonized grain and we mixed it with a pasteurized substrate, cocoa coir. We pressed it down in our tub, put a lid on it, and now we're gonna leave it alone. That's all spawning to bulk is. We're just expanding our colonized grain onto a bulk substrate. And there you have it, we've done it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, any recommendations or feedback for me, leave them below. I love hearing from you all and I appreciate your feedback. Finally, subscribe, follow along with us, join our community and continue to learn how to grow your own mushrooms at home. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you so much for following along. Thank you so much for being here. Be sure to leave me a comment and I'll get back to you soon. Hope you all have a great night.